Happy Halloween, everyone. We saw some spooky price action today in quantum stocks as they may be rallying into earnings. We're gonna discuss that. We're gonna look at a bunch of different quantum stocks and the stock heat map. And we're gonna look at the overall market performance. And we're gonna look at Castellum and Navitas as well. And since it's Halloween, we're gonna go rapid fire super fast because you gotta get out there and trick or treat. Can't keep you here too long. So let's just jump right in. The stocks climbed today and they had a winning month. The S&P was up a quarter of a point. The Dow was up just a smidge. The NASDAQ held its green, although it did have a lot of sell off during the day. Just taking a look at the quantum watch list, QUBT was up 11.6%, which was a very strong performance. Amazon was up 9.58%. CCCX was up 7.8%. LAES 7.7%, strong close there. Rigetti 4% and down the quantum watch list, we're seeing a lot of green with the laggard of the day being Microsoft. And then on our other watch list here, we see that CTM, Castellum, a company that I invest in has had a nice day. In fact, at one point they were up 25% on a $62 million contract, $60 million contract. We'll take a look at, at that press release and see exactly what the amount was. Navitas is going into earnings. A lot of these quantum companies are going into earnings in the next week or two. I think IonQ and D-Wave report next week and then Rigetti the following week. So that's kind of maybe playing into some of this price action. Of course, we did have the rate cut and the easing of China and US relations. So there wasn't any huge news story today to go over. So we're just gonna go right into the charts. I'm gonna give my thoughts and we're gonna get out of here. So INQ, after posting a high of 85, 8470 per share actually dropped all the way down here to about $50 a share. And it's been slowly holding a bit of an uptrend. And it actually did close above a previous level of support. So you can see here and here that INQ is actually looking a little bit more bullish directional. The candles, the four hour candles are getting a little bit longer and a little bit more green, which is what we like to see, as you can see in the sell off. There was very bearish price action for many, many trading days. So as we go into IonQ's earnings, just keep in mind that this is the best balance sheet this company has ever had. They've successfully completed multiple acquisitions of, of many companies. And I'm personally looking for them to continue momentum from Analyst Day, which started a lot of this quantum rally into the earnings and also give us guidance and an outlook onto not only their tech milestones, but the revenue visibility. So I'm really looking forward to INQ earnings, especially in this quantum earnings season. All right, now let's take a look at Rigetti. So Rigetti is actually making quite a bit of a recovery here and it did knock out a couple resistances and had a nice close. So we actually closed at 44, which is a an area of previous resistance and previous support. We actually closed above, which is a bullish sign that we could potentially see maybe a retest of 46, maybe a retest of 48. 48 is going to be a huge figure for Rigetti in the next few trading days. And the results of D-Wave and INQ are going to kind of play into how Rigetti and its stock performs. And of course, the wider market backdrop as well. If the wider market is having a tough time or selling off, then quantum stocks are gonna have a tough time as well. But we can see that now we're starting to create a little bit of those more bullish indicators where we're having higher lows and it looks like the trend might be accelerating. So we're seeing some good signs on the one hour candles in Rigetti. And of course, the 52 week high is $58 a share. I don't personally mind if it doesn't get back to that. I'm fine if Rigetti just hangs around 40 and builds up support and goes on the run maybe the next time it has some meaningful news. So a breakthrough on its computers or if they release their 100 qubit chip by the end of the year, maybe that's a catalyst for them. I'm personally not necessarily looking for an immediate retrace back to 5658, although I wouldn't rule anything out. Now, if you're looking at this from a more bearish lens, you could also see maybe if the market doesn't hold up for us, you'd wanna be watching 39 and then 34. If it breaks 34, that's 
a bad sign for Rigetti as there that's a very critical level of support. And the next stop down would be 29 in that gap fill situation. Okay, D-Wave. D-Wave has been an impressive performer. A close at about 37. It's holding about 37 in the aftermarket. If we look at the sell-off for D-Wave, it has been quite volatile. It went down 44%, a nauseating drop in just a few sh uh, short trading days. Not for the faint of heart quantum stocks. You've got to have uh, be current on all of your heart medications to hold these stocks. We did actually with D-Wave, we broke through 2871, which was a very big level of support for D-Wave QBTS. And it did come down and it retested that 2585. The dip was bought, it gapped up. And now we're seeing more of a consistent uptrend. Some of the stronger price action we're actually seeing is from D-Wave. And this close is actually right on this 37.49, which is somewhat come into play in the past, but we, to be perfectly honest, we don't have a ton of price history up here. So the next stop for D-Wave could be that 41.96. And of course, 46, there's not a lot of resistance ahead. It just depends on the market conditions how they do in earnings, how IronQ does in earnings. It's looking bullish. And if we wanted to take all, uh, if I want to give just bullish case, we fill this gap and maybe get rejected and hold somewhere in this range. In a bearish case, we're going to come back down and maybe retest 2871. So just be prepared for different scenarios. Okay. Seal SQ. It's moved a lot. It's a Fan favorite as far as quantum stocks go. There's a lot of people that love this stock. We just closed up 200%, so a triple since early September. So congratulations if you are in CLSQ. You've held the stock. You've held it to your convictions. You are seeing the rewards of that now, and you're also seeing what is absolutely critical and what we did not get back in 2024 is we're actually getting support at a higher level. So the stock is building a beautiful area of support between 636 and 769. And it's okay, actually, as we've seen some rejections off that 769, and we've seen it trade in this range, we don't want to see a full collapse right down to three or two dollars. It's actually very good and very healthy for the stock that is holding these levels and moving kind of up and down between that 76. And of course, we had that recent retest of that 536, which was looks like a good buy the dip opportunity for CLSQ. And they do have some exciting announcements coming up in 2025. We did do the interview here on this channel with Carlos, their, their CEO. So 2025 could still have some, they could have some tricks up their sleeve. I mean, it is Halloween, so trick or treat. I think CLSQ might still have some room to run. Maybe we could be looking at double digits later this year. QUBT, so the mysterious headless horseman of the quantum stocks and a frustrating one to cover. It's having a little bit of recovery. We can see on previous four hour candles that there has been some explosive movement and we're starting to see actually that this $15 is a pretty solid level where buyers are stepping in. So in fact, I'm just going to draw out that line there. Th these imaginary lines kind of help me read the chart and explain what I'm seeing to you all. So 1479 roughly is kind of this zone where we've seen multiple dip buys and a little bit of push up. And then we were trading around this channel for a little while here. QUBT actually pushed up out of that channel, giving us a setup to maybe gap fill up to 1844 and maybe look for 1938. The key for Quantum Computing Inc., if you're looking specifically at the stock price and you have a bullish lens on this specific company, they need to get their dilution done. Right now, they're doing a dilution for $750 million. This is from early in October. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up and see that the dilution is over, but it is not. They're still diluting. So that is what is suppressing the stock. This is exactly what we saw with D-Wave while they were diluting. We saw tons of sell-off, lots of bearish price action, lower lows. The fact that this stock posted an 11, 12% gain today and had these candles shows there's some very significant underlying bullishness happening here on this ticker. And this 
confirmed my prediction that when the dilution is over, that this stock has a chance to kind of slingshot up and have some of these candles of the past. So I'm watching it. I'm positioned with shares and calls if that is what happens. Of course, QUBT could also move down if we're taking more of a bearish lens. I, in this current market, I'm not rolling anything out, but I'm looking more to the upside for QUBT. CCCX, if we're looking at a four hour chart, we can see that the height of kind of the euphoria or the hope for Churchill Capital Core and their merger with inflection was here around 26, 27, $28 a share. There was a pretty significant downtrend all the way to 13, absolutely brutal, but we closed around 19. So if we kind of have this idea here that we've really dropped about 30% from those highs, I think that's completely okay because we're still a little ways away from when that SPAC merger would happen and when inflection would move into the ticker. I still think inflection will IPO and have a great IPO. I mean, we've seen companies like Figma IPO and just go absolutely crazy. So if if we see inflection on the stock market and it's investable with their ties to NVIDIA and everything they have going on with their company, I think this is still a great entry point if that SPAC merger is to go through. Castellum. So Castellum announced the award of a $66.2 million full and open contract to their SSI subsidiary. So basically, they're not a huge company. This is a dollar stock. It's a dollar stock that since December of 2024 has kind of chopped sideways. But today we had a very significant gap up. It looks a little bearish on the day candle. If we look at the four hour candle, you can see that it gapped to 136 and then some, saw some sell off. So one thing with Castellum that I've noticed being a shareholder for quite a while along on this stock is it is it, when it does have gains, it's very hard for it to hold gains. So this contract is a good step in the, uh, in the right direction. If we're looking at the one year and we're looking at these candles, we can see that there was a point where the stock was $2.80. We're currently in post at 114. So if this stock was to move up, that would rec that would be a 150% upside. And as you can see also that this stock here has, if I bring back my drawings, if I kind of just show you, this stock has kind of held above that 86 cents roughly definitely around that psychological level of a dollar. So it does look primed with this rate cut and with kind of the overall dynamics of our current market to maybe continue running into earnings. Castellum is also going into earnings, so pretty crazy. And then let's take a look at Navitas. So Navitas exploded on this story that they were going to have this new product for NVIDIA's AI factory architecture. And if we look at the, the chart, the four hour chart, we can kind of see that explosion. And I got very lucky in this stock. This was my entry point over here. Navitas is going into earnings and they exploded all the way up to 16, 17, $18 a share. And right now it looks to me like they're kind of in this bullish flag going into earnings. So we saw some buying at the end of the day today. Could this be an indicator of what's to come going into earnings for Navitas? So it does seem like a pretty bullish setup there as well. I wanna just go over real quick to the Discord. We have an earnings channel over on the Discord and I wanted to show you all kind of just the amount of earnings that are coming up for the portfolio here. So this is just, my portfolio, but Grab, Navitas, Palantir, AMD, Celsius, these are all reporting next week or the following week. Honest, INQ, Joby, Lyft, Quantum Psy, Recursion Pharmaceuticals, Skywater, Archer, D-Wave, Sound, Veritone, Big Bear AI, Ondas, Plug, Rigetti, Rocket Lab, Castellum, Nebius, Airship, Poet, Space, uh, Virgin Galactic Holdings Class A and QUBT. That's a lot. Th this, this is a meaningful earnings lineup for my portfolio. So I'm expecting some things to go up and some things to go down. Hopefully it all kind of levels out in the end. Anyway, 
Hope you guys have a great Halloween. Um, eat an extra piece of candy. You, you earned it. And we'll see you in the next one. If you would like to support the quantumbull.com and the Quantum Bull YouTube channel, I do have YouTube memberships here. Each of them has exclusive perks. The Gold Bull membership gets you into our Discord with trade alerts, and we have a lot of fun over there. So I invite you to come join as a channel member.